Hey guys, I am finally live. Um, sorry. If you were around last night, you know that my video started off sideways and then I ended up having to do it in portrait view because for some reason uh, the Facebook app didn't want me to do a horizontal video. My daughter's coming back. Um, and it was doing the same thing to me tonight. And so I ended up having to download the Pages app, um, which I don't normally have on my phone because in my opinion, the app is useless. Coming? I started it. Anyway, so I had to download the app before um, I could go live, and but it is actually working since I have the video in my normal format. Um, I know this does make it a little bit harder for those of you that are on mobile. Uh, it fits the screen better if it's portrait. But, oh, thank you. She went and got me bug spray because I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes. Um, you're getting a little eaten by mosquitoes. Do I need to spray you too? Make sure they anyway, like that so this is a uh, baby Gantix. It's really, really oily, which is a downside, but it's natural and it's essential oils and it actually works. So, yay. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. All right, do I need to spray you? All right, rub it in. Okay, so anyway, a um, couple things. I was gonna do a whole thing on BT, um, but I decided that watching me spray my plants is almost as much fun as watching me plant seeds, which is almost as much fun as watching paint dry. Huh? I'm talking. Can you wait? Like five minutes? Five minutes? Okay, so anyway, um, but if you take a look at my potatoes over here, my really, really sad potatoes, if you can tell just how much, how eaten they are, um, I discovered that my problem was not um, hornworms, it is actually armyworms, which are even more of a pain in the butt, because the reason they're called armyworms is I swear these suckers... Um, don't, please, just, the mosquito is not going to hurt my phone. Anyway, the army worms, it's like they swarm. Um, and I'm sure it's just because the moth lays so many eggs. You can go now. Um, but these things, they eat a ton for being as small as they are. And then they get huge and ugly and they turn into moths. No, that's not going to work on the army worms. I'll, I will get them later. All right. And I, I'm sorry, I don't remember what kind of moth they turned into. Anyway, so BT, um, which is also known as thuricide, is a bacterium that you spray on the leaves. Um, and so then when the caterpillar eats the leaf, then it, um, the bacteria basically makes them sick. So they, um, they starve to death and die. Uh, the downside is it takes a couple days for it to actually work. Yes, what? Hurry, quick. What am I spraying? You can sit on my table over there, or you can sit them on the wagon right there, or you can hold them, or there's a chair over there. Okay, let me finish talking. All right, sorry. This is why I normally make my kids stay inside. Um, but the BT is organic, um, and it only affects caterpillars. The downside is it will affect all caterpillars, which means it can also hurt your... Um, your butterfly caterpillars. So a couple of things is one, um, I spray in the evening because that is when most of your pollinators have gone to bed. Um, and then also I do not spray um, herbs or anything that might be a host plant, which I mean most host plants for butterflies are typically going to be your herbs, a few flowers and um, milkweed obviously. Uh, so I don't spray my herbs and then I have an actual pollinator garden over there, which is actually kind of getting overrun um, with one particular flower that I made the mistake of planting. But that way, um, and I don't have a lot of flowers, at least not host plants here in the garden. Um, so that way, that area over there that's my pollinator garden doesn't get sprayed. But 
um, when you spray the BT, you have to make sure that you get all of the leaves. Ideally, you want to get top and bottom, um, but I know how that goes. It gets really hard to get the bottoms of all of the leaves. But um, the other downside with the BT is that it doesn't work if it's going to rain. And so um, I, I actually, I'm going to spray tonight because we're supposed to, we're going to have a couple of days without rain. But you normally are going to need to reapply at least once a week um, through your caterpillar season, which for us is pretty much the entire spring. All right. Oh, shoot. The dog knocked over my beer. All right. Um, so that is, that is it for talking about BT. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is I was talking to a friend of mine and, you know, we've got all of the quarantine stuff going on and everything. And we were, um, we were talking about how kind of this is, this has actually been a blessing for a lot of folks. And I know it can be really hard to look at it that way because, um, it's, it's so hard and trying for everybody, especially if you, you know, if you've been laid off, if you own a small business, if you're working for a small business, um, we're still up in the air with my husband's job because, um, most architecture firms are small businesses and they are in New Jersey, which is under even more restriction than we are here in Florida. And so it's kind of, it's a, it's a week by week thing, whether or not they're going to have work and whether or not they're going to be able to keep everybody on full time. So I get it from that aspect. Um, but let's take a step back and take a look at the fact that, um, nature is able to replenish itself during all of this. We're really able to focus on what we need more than what we want. Um, we are spending more time with our families. We're sitting down to meals. Um, businesses are closing early, which is also forcing us to be home with our families in the evenings. There's a lot of ways that this has actually been good for our society. Um, and one of those things is the focus on the focus getting back to local. And I really hope, and, and I really hope that after all of this, a lot of folks are able to think about the things they learned through all of this and not be so quick to go back to the way things were. Um, get back to buying local, um, supporting small businesses, you know, through all of this, we've seen shortages at the big grocery chains. And yet a lot of the small businesses have still had food. Um, we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of this in Florida because this is our growing season. So you may not be seeing it in other parts of the country because your farmers are just now planting or they may, they may not even be planting yet. All right. But here it is hitting our local farmers so hard because a lot of them, you know, have sold commercially to schools and restaurants and now they don't have an outlet for, um, for the produce that they've been, that they've been growing. So we have a business around the corner that they are just in produce distribution and, um, they have had to completely shift their model. So now they have a stand set up on the front of their property and they're selling the produce that they would normally be taking to schools and restaurants and they're selling it direct to the public there on out in front of their warehouse. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We've had tomato growers selling cases of tomatoes. A couple weeks ago, we were able to get a case of 25 pound case of tomatoes for $5, which is only 20 cents a pound. This week they're up to $10, which is still only 40 cents a pound. I was at the grocery store today and Roma tomatoes were, I think $1.29 and that was on sale. So it's still a great price. Um, I'm seeing, you know, local cattle ranches that are offering up their, their beef to the public for less than you get at the grocery store. Um, fisher, uh, like fishing boats that are selling direct to the public. And this is one thing that, I mean, I've even seen growing up in a farming community is that it was, um, it was the farms that were able to sell direct to the public that were really able to kind of ride out the storm. 
Now, I understand that, you know, when you are selling direct to the public, that means you're going to have increased, um, increased operating costs. You're going to have to ha hire more labor. You're going to have to, you know, run a cash register, keep retail hours, those types of things. Hang on. I'm trying to not cough. Um, so there are reasons that it becomes more expensive. Yes, I will. Um, I, I, I definitely know the ones in Florida. Um, if you are not in Florida, let me know where you are and I will dig up the resources for you for your state. Um, but anyway, so, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, but please, please, if you guys have any more questions, keep them going because um, otherwise I run out of things to say. Um, oh, anyway, so it was, the, it was the farms that, but, so even with the increased cost, you're still able to um, build a relationship with your customers and they are going to continue buying from you. Everyone's got to eat. All right, you're Pinellas County. Oh, um, okay. I will, we just started a group for the state of Florida to help connect people with food. So um, I will post a link to that group for you after I'm done with my video. Uh, there, being in Pinellas, if you take the um, Sunshine Skyway south down into like Bradenton, Sarasota, the, um, there's actually a lot of resources down there. In fact, I know specifically of a place in Waimama that is selling um, huge $10 produce boxes. So I will, I will um, send you that link when I'm done. You're welcome. Anyway, um, that is if you're in South Pinellas County, but anyway, it, either way, it's, it's not that bad of a trip down there. Um, sorry. <laughs> so, but one thing that I wanna see through all of this is I would really like to see legislation passed that makes it easier for farms to continue to sell direct to the public. Specifically, I'm talking about dairies because we see, um, and even, <clears throat> even egg farms, all of these things that have been so restricted because um, we look at the, the more middlemen you have to put in the process, one, the easier it is for that supply chain to get broken. And then of course, the more the cost adds up. And we just look at how expensive food has gotten. Now, I'm not saying that food is necessarily cheap to produce, um, because especially if you're producing on a small scale, it does get expensive. But if you're talking about these large commercial farms, they are able to um, produce at a scale that makes it a lot cheaper for them, all right? And so there are ways to provide food cheaper to the public without having to go through all of these distribution chains. And that's what I would like to see kind of broken up a little bit. Um, because I think if nothing else we've seen from, from this whole thing is that our supply chain is extremely fragile, all right? Um, but the other thing is, yeah, we wouldn't have to, you know, we wouldn't have um, large poultry farms having to mass kill off chicks because they're worried that they're not going to have a market to sell them at in two months. Um, we wouldn't have dairies having to dump their milk because their co-ops can't take any more milk because the processing plants can't bottle it fast enough. If we could sell that raw milk direct to the public. Yes, I get that there are risks with raw milk. All right, I understand that. But um, I can tell you that most dairy, <coughs> all of the dairies that I've seen in my lifetime um, have, have been very clean. Um, and, and I think that that standard has probably even higher than it was, you know, when I was actively involved in all of that. All right. And so the concerns that we had with raw milk at the turn of the century, when people were milking cows and cattle cars and keeping them in these mud lots, it's a lot different. All right. Um, I mean, nowadays you've got you've you've got dairies that are completely robotic. Like you don't even have human interaction there except to oversee the operations. 
and everything is just it's a sterile environment or as much as you can when you're talking about cows and so um you know i i think that we need to get rid of that stigma when it comes to raw milk because um, i think that we're really missing an opportunity to save our farms by creating this stigma and and making people think that it's so dangerous uh, and it's actually it's really good for you there's a I don't think enough people realize that the pasteurization process kills off all of these enzymes that actually help us digest the milk so all of these people that have lactose intolerance and dairy allergies are actually able to drink raw milk because it still has those enzymes that help the body to process it um, you know, I've heard the argument with it being too high in fat. I've lost weight any time that I've been drinking raw milk. In fact, I, with this quarantine, I should probably be eating less Doritos and drinking more raw milk. Side story. Um, oh, yes, the dairy. Uh, I actually, I really want to go down there. D is it Dakin? Is that how you pronounce it? Um, because I actually, I'm thinking about running back down to Waimama to get uh, some more tomatoes. And so I was thinking about stopping by the dairy because they've got like gallons of milk for two fifty a gallon or something. I mean, it's ridiculously cheap. Um, but again, it just goes back to that, you know, we could save our dairies because right now they can't, well, right now they can't even sell the milk. But even before all of this started, they couldn't sell the milk for the same cost that it was costing them to feed the cows and produce the milk. And so if we could at least get them up to the point where they can survive and they can keep operating and not lose these farms that have been in their families for generations, you know, let's, let's do it. Let's stop making it so difficult for them to just survive. Anyway, that's... <laughs> That's my rant for the night. Um, but yeah, so on that note, like I actually, tonight I went and uh, I met up with a farm that um, they, they're, they're going around, they're, they're picking up produce and then traveling around Central Florida delivering it. So I was able to get, um, I think I ended up with like six heads of cabbage because she gave me a few extra because some of them were small. Um, and then a bushel of uh, corn, and it only cost me $30. And a bushel of corn, if you don't know, is like 40 to 50 years. So we're going to be eating corn for days. Um, and the blueberry you pick is going on right now in our area. And so I've seen prices from anywhere from $3 a pound to $5 a pound. Um, we've got peach you pick going on. Blackberries are starting to come into season. We've got a lot of produce that's just, that is ripe right now. So especially if you're in Florida, um, those resources are out there to, to get that fresh food and, and get it direct from the farmer. The other thing uh, that I wanted to say, if, if you have not found resources in your area, now is a great time to create those resources. Um, I'm not saying you need to do a spreadsheet of the entire state. You will probably find that if you get in touch with your state's ag department, they have probably already started compiling those resources. But something as simple as starting a Facebook group. Um, a friend of mine started one, and then for some wild reason she made me an admin of it. But um, basically, you know, we're seeing all of these posts pop up in our news feeds with friends sharing different farms that are selling stuff. And so we're just cross posting to this group. But the nice thing is then other people join the group. And so every time we cross post these resources with all of these farms selling direct to the public, now everyone in the group has access to it and is able to see it. We post, you know, where it's located so they know if it's close to them or whatnot. And in that way, um, you know, we're all able to get in touch with, with local food. Hopefully, and what our plan is, is that this continues beyond this quarantine and pandemic and everything, because, you know, we really, agriculture needs to, needs our support. Um, and if you're involved in any way, shape or form, whether it is just having a small homestead or just you like eating, we need to support agriculture and we need to, you know, help them any way we can, especially through times like this. Because like I said, a lot of them, I mean, it's great 
is great to, to sell to the consumers. Um, and a lot of, you know, we're all eating at home a whole lot more than we were a month ago, but they are losing so much money by not having those schools and restaurants to sell to as well. And so, um, you know, we really got to help them through this because that is one small business that we want to make sure keeps going because if the, if in the end of this, the only people left standing are the big corporate farms and we have just a handful of corporations running the food supply for the entire country and half of the known world, then the next time something like this happens, it's going to be far, far worse because we're not going to have those small farms to connect to directly. All right. So that is what I've got for tonight. I am sure I ran way over my time, but I wanted to get all of that off of my chest. So um, if you guys have any more questions for me, uh, leave them in the comments. I will post some of those resources for Florida as well, and I will talk to you guys next time.